Key Biscayne is an island located in Miami between the Atlantic Ocean and Biscayne Bay. It is the southernmost of the barrier islands along the Atlantic coast of Florida and lies south of Miami Beach. Spend a day with me and explore the beautiful Key Biscayne. Learn some informational fun facts and start planning your next vacation to the island of paradise. Stay tuned and enjoy some interesting things about Miami's Key Biscayne. The key is connected to Miami via the Reckenbecker Causeway, originally built in 1947. Juan Ponce de Leon found freshwater, called the island Santa Maria, and claimed it for the King of Spain in 1513. The King of Spain granted the island to Pedro Fornilis, a native of Menorca. Florida became a territory of the United States in 1521. Shortly thereafter, Marianne Davis of St. Augustine purchased the island from the Fornilis family for $100. Fun fact, Key Biscayne was occupied by the Tukistan Indians of the Khalsa Nation who fished and hunted with success. The Davis family sold three acres to the U.S. government for a military reservation for $225. The Davis family laid out the first town on Key Biscayne in 1839. A few lots were sold, but development was slow. Pirates used the fresh water and negative cover on a key to raid ships in the shipping lanes. A substantial pineapple plantation and groves of coconut palms were planted. Leaving the northern half undisturbed, he developed a coconut plantation and experimental fruit groves in the southern section. Tropical plant introductions and experimentations were done with the assistance of David Fairchild. Importation of the Malay, now Malay, dwarf coconut from the Federated Malay States was financed by W.J. Matheson. This disease resistant palm has proven to be a significant introduction. The Mathesons created a community on the plantation. Schools, a commissary, and a zoo were maintained on the island and daily transportation to the mainland was available. W.J. built a home for entertaining called Mashta House on the western tip of Mashta Island. Social notables came from everywhere to the fantastic social events on their yachts. Key Biscayne has been affected by many hurricanes throughout its history. The unnamed 1926 hurricane submerged the island as the eye passed directly over the key. Restoring the plantation after the natural disaster was costly to the Mathesons. W.J. Matheson died of a heart attack in 1930. He had divided the ownership of his land into a northern half and a southern half. Each of his three children, Hugh, Malcolm, and Anna Wood, also known as Nan, owned one third of each section. Halfway along the Rickenbacker Causeway lies Virginia Key, and you must stop to visit two great sites. A remarkable place on Virginia Key is Beach Park. There is always a lot going on at Beach Park, from barbecues and hiking, to swimming, to enjoying the colorful beach huts. The historic significance of the beach lies in the fact that this was the only beach in Miami where both races could mingle during segregation. Another remarkable place is Miami Sea Aquarium. Deemed Miami's best aquarium where you and your family can enjoy shows with dolphins and sea lions, and admire the cute manatees, sea turtles, and everything else that lives in the waters around Miami. In addition, 
It was home to the original flipper. Due to the plantation's low profit, the Matheson children made a deal with Day County, spearheaded by County Commissioner Charles Crandon to donate the northern half of the key to the public. In return, the county promised to build a causeway to the key from the mainland. World War II delayed the construction, but the causeway was finished and opened in November 1947. In the 1940s, the island was the location for several movies, including They Were Expandable with John Wayne. The films capitalized on the key's appearance of South Seas Islands with its groves of palm trees. Fun fact. Following the First Seminole War and a treaty with Spain, Florida became a U.S. territory in 1821. Key Biscayne has terrific beaches and is sandwiched between two major parks, Crandon Park to the north and Bill Bags Cape Florida State Park to the south. Hugh Matheson had built a nine-hole golf course, a hideaway with cottages, and the Jamaica Inn. The golf course hosts to the Senior PGA Tour for nearly two decades, is a championship 18-hole course, and it's the only one in Miami overlooking the glittering Biscayne Bay. Designed by Robert Von Hag, the Par 72 course is known for its beauty and difficulty. Rated one of the top 10 courses by Golf Week and one of America's top 75 upscale courses by Golf Digest. In 1950, the Mackle Company purchased Nons Southern Third of the Middle of the Key and built 289 cement block homes targeted to veterans with attractive financing. They also built on the ocean where the Key Beast Game Villas later to become the Key Biscayne Hotel and Villas. A shopping center was built and land was donated for a school. With great success, the Mackle brothers, Frank, Bob, and Elliot, purchased more land and developed more homes up to the Heather Drive. The Mackle company filled the land north of Heather and built more homes and donated land for the KB Community Church St. Agnes Catholic Church, KB Presbyterian Church, and the Key Biscayne Yacht Club. The Key Biscayne Hotel and Villas hosted many famous celebrities and politicians. Vice President Richard Nixon stayed there and was part of a famous meeting with John Kennedy. This occurred when Kennedy defeated Nixon in 1960. When Nixon was elected president, he established the Winter White House, a compound of Bay Lane properties on Biscayne Bay adjacent to the homes of his friends B.B. Rebozo and Senator George Smathers. Key Biscayne had become island paradise. The fate of the southern third of Key Biscayne took a different turn. Jose Aliman bought Cape Florida from James Daring in 1948. A seawall was erected on the western and southern waterfront and a low-lying landfill with plans for development. The idea of building a causeway to Elliott Key and Key Largo was discussed. In 1966, Bill Baggs, editor of Miami News, was able to bring together the Aliman Parcel owner with the state of Florida to purchase the land for a state park. Cape Florida Lighthouse, which sits as a stately landmark with Bill Bags, Cape Florida State Park remains the oldest standing structure in Miami-Dade County. Though it has been reinforced and refurbished several times since its original build in 1825. Daily tours are offered with stories of sinking ships, Seminole Indian ambushes, and the many lighthouse keepers that have occupied the keeper's cottage over the years. Fun fact, during the early 1820s, an estimated 300 black Seminoles found passage from Key Biscayne to Andros Island in the Bahamas on seagoing canoes and Bahamian boats.
The island was touted as an ideal destination for the recovery of the health. When Indian Key had been named the seat for the newly created Dade County in 1836, the county provided that the county court would meet annually on Key Biscayne. Fun fact, while the war against the Seminoles continued, Mary and William Davis made plans to develop a town of Key Biscayne. They had a town plan printed in Philadelphia. Fun fact, Key Biscayne was first developed for coconut cultivation. The earliest mention of coconuts on Key Biscayne is a Spanish account from 1568 although the reference may be to cocoa plums rather than coconuts. Mature coconut trees were on Cape Florida by 1830s, likely grown from coconuts sent from Mexico by Henry Perrin to the first lighthouse keeper, John Dubose. Under pressure from US settlers, Seminole and Black Seminoles began to migrate into Central and Southern Florida. In the early 19th century, African American slaves and Black Seminoles escaped to the Bahamas from Cape Florida, including hundreds in the 1820s to evade American slavery. Keep on watching because there's more to learn about the beautiful island of paradise, Key Biscayne. If you got this far into the video, go ahead and leave me a purple heart in the comments. With Crandon Parks, golf and tennis facilities, unique eco-adventures, and breathtaking beach, Crandon Park offers a lot for everyone. Crandon Park was a donation made to the county in 1940 by hearers of William John Matheson with the condition that the land be used as a public park. The park is named after County Commission Chairman Charles H. Crandon, who offered to build a causeway to connect Key Biscayne to the mainland in exchange for the land donation. Crandon Park is located in Bear Cup Preserve with a two mile long sandy beach where you can scout the mangroves and coastal hammocks for rare birds and sea turtles nests or enjoy kayaking paddleboarding, and kiteboarding.
You can also explore the park's grounds on a single or quad bike rental. Constantly named among the top beaches in the nation, Crandon Park Beach features soft sand and calm waters. You can rent a chair or beach umbrella, use the grills, covered picnic area, and volleyball courts. You can also relax in a private 100 square foot rented cabana complete with a private shower and designated parking. The Crandons Park Nature Center named the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas Biscay Nature Center is a prime destination for immersive hands-on learning. Witness baby sea turtles up close, take a seagrass adventure with the naturalist, and collect sea life in nets and buckets. For further study, this nonprofit conservation center also has exhibits, art gallery, lab classrooms, and a central amphitheater courtyard. The tennis center at Crandon Park was until recently the longtime home of the Miami Open. Many tennis stars have graced these courts, including Serena Williams, Rafael Nadal, and Andy Murray, to name a few. The center boosts 27 tennis courts with 13 lighted for evening play with both clay and hard courts. On-site pro shop that offers lessons, clinics, summer camp, and after-school program. Zoo Miami had its origins in Crandon Park's Botanical Garden. The county purchased several animals in 1948, which started the Crandon Zoo. By 1965, Crandon Zoo had grown into one of the major zoos in the county. With over 1,000 animals, in about 380 species. Today, the Crandon Gardens Nature Center, Beach, Marina, Golf Course, and Tennis Center are all visited by tourists and locals. The Miami Marine Stadium is another one of Key Biscayne's failed ventures. The stadium opened in 1963 as a venue to watch motorboat races. Despite the bad omen of a fatal accident on opening day, it thrived and packed the 6,000 wooden seats with spectators of boxing events, concerts, and much more. However, in 1992, it was declared unsafe and simply abandoned. Today, the decayed cement steps and half crumbled walls have created great canvases for graffiti and art. Kibi Skane is a great place to visit besides going to South Beach if you come to Miami. It's a great family vacation spot. You can find great activities to do with friends and family. This is such a beautiful view overlooking downtown Miami's Bayfront, Port of Miami, and Brickell. And I do have a video of Brickell, Miami 
I will have the video in the description box below if you would like to see it. It is a great view of Brickell, Miami. Comment down below would you visit Key Biscayne and what you like the most out of the video. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.